everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Rubin. I'm an associate professor at the Department of Veterinary Microbiology at the University of Saskatchewan. And like all of you, I've been struggling with how to teach in COVID times. Um, asynchronous delivery of lecture material is a huge challenge and student engagement is something that I've been really concerned about. Um, at our institution, we have moved to almost 100% asynchronous delivery, so it's all pre-recorded lectures. And I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to sort of deliver this material in, in the best way that I possibly can. Um, where I've come to in my own um, sort of philosophy as an instructor is that doing video editing um, is, is a really important part of the process, at least for me. Um, some of the advantages that, that I can see in editing these videos, as opposed to sort of recording and uploading, are that um, one, it's, it's more sustainable for you as an instructor because you can simply delete mistakes that you make and, and splice clips together, um, getting rid of sections that, that just don't work for you or where you haven't explained something very well. Um, it, it really helps me to improve the continuity of my lectures. So in dividing them up into multiple sections, it can feel really choppy. And so I tend to deliver my entire um, 30 to 40 minute lecture and then um, uh, sort of chop it up in, in post-production. Um, that gives a much more natural flow uh, to, to the delivery of the material and, and I hope uh, will improve student engagement. And so today what I want to do is just present to you um, uh, the, the program that I use, which is iMovie, uh, for doing my video editing um, and share some of the, the really basic strategies that I've come up with for trying to make my videos as, as good as possible. I'm by no means an expert in this program. I'm not an expert in video production or editing. And so I think that if I can do this, this is certainly something that anyone can do. And I hope that some of these kind of tips and tricks uh, prove helpful in your teaching. Here. So this is the iMovie dashboard and where we start when we want to create a new project. I'm just going to go into a lecture um, that I've, I've worked on previously to give you a bit of an overview of uh, what the platform looks like. So um, here what you can see um, when, when we're sort of on the, the main editing page, um, up on the top left here you can see we have these five different tabs and under my media this is where you enter all of the materials that you want to include in your lecture video. So this can be um, an mp4 of a, a PowerPoint presentation um, that you've delivered. I like to do this um, using Zoom but there's a variety of other applications that you can use as well. You can also include um, either still shots of uh, lecture slides that you've taken or photos, images, um, any other kind of graphics, and then also audio. Um, any materials can be entered into iMovie using uh, this import tool here. And you can simply select the file that you want to import or you can drag and drop also from an open window. So it's fairly easy to get the materials in there. Under the audio tab, um, there's a wide variety of uh, built-in sound effects and, and music and sort of funny little things within um, iMovie that you can very easily insert into your lecture. Um, under titles, um, I, I think this isn't probably best described as titles, at least not in the context of um, preparing lecture content. Um, for delivery to students, it's, it's really um, a caption. So it certainly can be the title of a, a slide, but I oftentimes um, insert text into my slide um, when I maybe haven't described something very well. And when I'm going back and doing my video editing, I realize, oh, I, I meant to say this, and I can, I can quickly insert that without having to re-record. There's a lot of different formats that are available and, and lots to sort of play around and have fun with. Backgrounds are something that I haven't had any experience with, and so I'm not going to go into these in any detail. And then finally, we have um, transitions, which is a way to add um, sort of smoother or more interesting transitions between either video clips or still shots and video clips, 
um, within your video. Now down at the bottom here, you can see the editing pane. So this is where um, we actually do the work with the, the video clips and audio and images and, and sort of put them all together into one cohesive package. And what I'll show you is um, just some of the features within this that I find really helpful. So over on this uh, right hand side here next to settings, you can see there's this little toggle bar. Um, what this allows you to do is to change the time scale. And so the further this little indicator is over to the left, the more condensed time is. So this entire 13 minute clip now falls within um, this very small window. And the further to the right you have it, uh, the more spread out time is and the more kind of zoomed in you are with your view. This is really helpful when doing your editing to be a little bit more zoomed in because you can see exactly where you're making cuts and splices um, into, your, into your media. Another thing that I find useful is if you click on settings, you can change the size of the clip. So you can zoom in a bit more and that allows you to see um, just a little bit easier exactly what's going on. So if we, if we look at this clip, um, the first thing that um, I think you can notice is that there's, there's a lot going on here. So um, this is our, uh, the, the MP4 of me delivering one of my lectures. And you can see that there's a visual component. And then below that, there's these waveforms, which represents the audio. Now, these are um, sort of uh, attached to each other when you first insert your MP4 clip, but you can detach them. Um, and, and work with the, the visual and audio separately. We can adjust the volume, the relative volume of our clips in a few different ways. So when we have our uh, clip of interest highlighted, you can see here surrounded by yellow, it appears in this window um, up on the top right. And that's where we have the ability to do some sort of general editing of the entire clip. So if you click on the volume icon here, you can see that we can adjust the volume of that clip um, to be sort of a percentage of its recorded volume. There's also this really useful feature here where it says lower the volume of other clips. And what this does is it um, allows you to uh, reduce the volume of other materials that you might be superimposing on, on your recorded lecture. So for me, what I do is I always start my videos out with an intro, there's some music, and what happens when it gets to my actual lecture clip is the volume of that music decreases so that the students can hear me talking. If you want to look at your audio and, and video separately, what you can do is first highlight that clip and then holding down the control button, um, click on that clip with the mouse and you'll see that this window pops up. There's a lot of features in here that, that I use all the time in doing my, my video editing and, and I think these are probably the most useful tools um, for putting together lectures. So you can um, detach your audio so that the, the audio and visual components are not necessarily um, linked with each other anymore. This is really useful for doing things like voiceovers or if you have a really, nasty, uh, really noisy background um, that you want to delete and then, and then record new audio. I'm just gonna undo this change so it doesn't show up. Um, you also have uh, the ability to do things like splitting your clip so you can see here, I've just split it and, and made this um, one, one piece of uh, video into two separate chunks. And this allows us to either delete sections that we don't want um, or to insert new content in between that video. Uh, within our, again, I'm just gonna undo that. Um, within our video, uh, we can also adjust the volume here. So this little bar, acts just like the volume adjustment up on the top right side um, and, and we can very easily move that up and down. There's other editing uh, features that we can um, access within the software. So if you go up to the uh, toolbar at the very top under modify, you can see that we can um, change the speed of our, our video. We can slow it down, we can speed it up, and we can introduce sort of special effects like instant replays and rewinds. Um, these are things that I've used in some of my videos, particularly in laboratory demonstrations where we're doing things like gram stains and, and we don't need to wait around for a whole minute. I can, I can uh, fast forward a little bit. The last general feature that I wanted to talk about is the ability to record voiceovers.
So in our uh, uh, editing pane here, you can see we have this little microphone. And if you click on that, you'll see that this record button becomes available. And what that allows you to do is to record a voiceover while watching your video. Now this is really useful for laboratory demonstrations or uh, other instructional content where you may have a lot of visual content but poor quality audio. This allows you to record a narration as you're watching um, the video that you've recorded. This is what it looks like. So it gives you a little countdown and then it allows you to start recording a new track. So you can see that's right here. You then have this um, audio file here, which you can move around and um, edit as we've done previously. In my lectures, I always start out the same way. So I have a um, title slide, which is just the first slide of my PowerPoint presentation that I've in included as a still image. Um, I have a um, uh, a sort of musical introduction that I use as the same one. It's kind of my class's brand for the year. And then as the music goes on, I um, cross dissolve my first slide into the lecture where I start doing my um, talking. And I will play you a clip of that now. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our first lecture on a specific genus. Um, today, we're going to be talking about our good friend Staphylococcus, a ubiquitous colonizer and cause of infections. One thing that's really useful to be able to do and that you can see I employed um, here is for still images, you can adjust um, how they appear. So if you go up to this little crop icon here, um, you can do what's called a Ken Burns, so it sort of zooms in or zooms out um, as, as the video plays. You can crop it to fill um, or you can fit. So there's, there's different ways of adjusting your images even directly within the software. And then you'll see there's uh, transitions. So I use um, cross dissolve to go between my introductory slide and the beginning of my lecture. When I get to the end of my lectures, I always end by fading to white. And you can find that option here up in the transitions. Um, this is just a, a, a nice feature that I think makes the video look good and it helps it to end a little bit less abruptly. And we're gonna start by just saying create new. We'll make a iMovie project here. And this is what your blank canvas looks like. So the first thing we obviously have to do is to insert our uh, video files that we've created and you can use whatever mp4 format you like. Um, I record my lectures in Zoom and then upload them from there. So here is uh, my lecture on Clostridium that I recorded in Zoom as an mp4 and we can drag that down here and you can see that it's a total of just over 40 minutes. Now I always like to start my videos with a nice clean frame and so what I've done is I've just taken a, oops, a screenshot of the first um, slide of the lecture and converted that into a TIFF file so that I have something nice and um, uh, clean to play over that. Uh, the other thing that I do with my lectures is I like to have them start with some audio. So I'd like to add in a, uh, they call it a jingle, <laughs> um, just a, a musical starting point, um, which I always do. And then I always have uh, cross dissolve as my transition. Um, so you can hear what this sounds like. <laughs> So it has a really nice professional sound to it. Um, you'll recognize a lot of the music from podcasts. So the next thing that we need to do is, you can see there's a lot of junk at the beginning where I was just getting set up. Um, I'm gonna start by just pausing or uh, muting my audio so that I can hear what I'm saying. And then what I'm gonna do is go in and just clip out all the garbage before I actually started delivering my lecture. 
So that's where I did it. Th the way that you're going to get rid of all of this junk is by um, first highlighting the clip and then holding down control and clicking on that clip when the um, time uh, signature bar is, is at that point. And you can see here you can split clip. That separates these into two different files, and this one can be very easily deleted. So now we start with just the, just the good stuff. So that looks pretty good. Um, th so this is a 41 minute lecture, and I'm going to aim to have it um, probably in four chunks. I have some other uh, video content that I'm going to be inserting. So I'll aim for about 10 minute um, segments that I'll be uh, breaking this down into. So I generally fast forward through this. Um, I have a pretty good idea of where I have previously made mistakes and need to do some more detailed editing. One thing that I find a little bit frustrating about this software is that it does lag. So if you're playing and then you scroll forward, it doesn't actually show you the preview down here. So in the beginning, it's a bit of a slow process of finding your breakpoints and knowing where you actually want to put your your pauses in. So to uh, split your lecture into multiple um, fragments, what I do is I find my endpoint. So here I'm at um, just over nine minutes, which is maybe a little bit shorter than I wanted, but it's a natural stopping point. And so what I've done is simply split my clip and then you can just cut we're going to exit the, this particular project and start our, our next um, segment of the lecture as a new project. And so I have to name this one. I always name it um, with the lecture number first, so 14 lecture part one. Um, that way it's really easy to identify them. If it's all lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, then everything starts with an L and it's not in any, um, it's not as easy to find. So then for our part two, we are going to create new, do the same thing, and we can simply paste. And here's our lecture from where we left off. Um, now, the other thing that I like to do at the beginning of um, these lectures is, so this is 14, two, is I always include uh, this opening picture as well. So we'll come back to that, insert that opening picture. As always, I like to do the cross dissolve transition so that it's nice and smooth. And then I also do a um, bit of lettering just to um, demonstrate or just to uh, make the point that this is part two of the lecture. So I'm just going to copy this from a previous project to make that easier for me to find. Oops. And we can go in here and simply paste. Now I've copied it just to ensure that I have the same font and the same style and everything. Um, you can find all of those in the titles here. So play around with these. There's a lot of um, options that you can choose from depending on, on sort of what you're uh, trying to convey to your students. In my, now this is just my style, but in my parts two, three, and in this case four, um, I don't like my slide to zoom like that. I find it's kind of annoying. I like that on the first one, but not the subsequent ones. And so you can say fit as opposed to Ken Burns and then it just stays static. So this is how it's gonna look. Part two, it pops up really nicely and then fades. So this is a case where I screwed up. Um, I had a problem, I, I, I wasn't saying things clearly. And what's great about this is here's all my mistake. I can simply um, split the clip delete that and we're into the good stuff. So after you make a mistake, leave yourself a pause so that it, the editing is easy and then you can just go ahead and delete that.
So the last thing I wanted to show you is just how I end my lectures. Um, just like at the beginning, there's always some kind of garbage at the end when you're closing off your program that you used to do your recording. And so I like to scan to the end, uh, find the place where I'm done talking. And then like previously, what we do is we select our clip, holding down control, we right click, um, split clip, delete the end, and then I always end my lectures with fade to white. And we can just have a preview of that. And that is it. That is how I edit my videos.